In question 6.1, we are asked to write down the equations of the asymptotes. Now remember that the asymptotes of a, per, of a hyperbola are always found over here and over here. So let me write that a little bit bigger for us and let's have a look. So this part tells us that the graph has moved three places to the left and this part tells us that the graph has moved one unit down. Therefore, if we go look for the asymptotes, it would be this one over here and this one down here. So the answer will be x equals to minus 3 or, sorry not or, the other answer is y equals to minus 1. So this one is y equals to minus 1 because this over here is a minus 1 and then this one because it's plus 3 it actually means that the graph has gone three places to the left and that's why we'll say x equals to minus 3. Okay, determine the domain of f. The domain is all the x values. So what I like to do with hyperbolas or with any domain question is I'm going to try to draw a line from the left to the right hand side and let's see if I can go all the way from the left to the right without lifting up my pen. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to go, 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 go. Whoops, see what's happening? I cannot go any further because of this asymptote. Then if I carry on on the other side, I can carry on again. So I can go from left to right, okay? So we'll say that x is an element of all numbers, so x can be any number, but I wasn't able to go over this little piece here. And so we say that x cannot be negative 3. So x can be all the numbers except for negative 3. All right, calculate the length of OB. So when you see O, we know that that's the origin, and B is the y-intercept of the hyperbola. So what I do is I take the hyperbola's equation, which I'll write it over here, and I find the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, you make x equal to 0, and this would give us negative 2 over 3. And so the length, now be careful guys, the length of OB will be 2 over 3. You can't say that the length is a negative value. Okay, so the next question says the length of OA. So that's from here up to A. Now you've got to ask yourself, what is happening at A? Well, that is a x-intercept of the graph F. So it's an x-intercept of the graph F. So we write down the equation of F once again. And we make y0 this time, because that is how you find x-intercepts. You make y0. And so what I'll do is I'll take the 1 over. I'm then going to multiply this x plus 3 up to the top, like that. And then if you eventually solve this, you would find that x equals to negative 3. So that means the coordinates here are negative 3 and 0. But what is the length? That length, you can't have a negative length, so the length will be a positive 3. Next question for six marks. Calculate or determine the coordinates of C and D. So what you've got to do is you've got to look at C and D and you've got to ask yourself, what is happening there? That is where the two graphs are going into each other. So what do we do? Whenever you want to find out where two graphs go into each other, you make them equal to each other. So you take the equation for F and you make it equal to the equation for G. There we go. Now... I'm going to write a half x rather as 1x over 2. It's the same thing. What I want you to realize now is that we need to get a common denominator here because this 1 is the same as 1 over 1. So we need to get a common denominator between these three. Now the common denominator there is going to be, so I'm going to call it the lowest common denominator, is going to be 2 bracket x plus 3. Okay, so what that means is that this one needs to be multiplied with 2. This one needs to be multiplied with both. And then this one needs to be multiplied with x plus 3. And so what that will look like is you're going to have 2 minus 1 times by 2 and x plus 3 equals to 1x times by x plus 3. I don't have to write out the denominators because this is an equation and when you have an equation you don't need the denominators. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to say um, 2 minus 2 and then in brackets x plus 3 equals to x squared plus 3x. Then I can multiply this 2 in to become 2x or negative 2x minus 6 equals to x squared plus 3x. And so here we're going to end up with minus 4 minus 2x equals to x squared 
plus 3x. And now it's just a case of solving. So I'm going to take everything over to the right hand side and you're going to end up with x squared plus 5x plus 4. Now this can factorize very easily as x plus 4 and x plus 1. And so I'm going to write the answers here. Therefore, x will be equal to negative 4 or x will be equal to negative 1. And so be careful though, those are only the x-intercepts, I mean the x-values. So you have now found the x-value of d and the x-value of c, but you also need the y-values. So to find the y-values, you will plug those x-values back into either the hyperbola or the straight line. It doesn't matter which one you choose because it's the same point. So what I do is I plug it into the straight line because the straight line equation is a lot simpler. So we can just write it down here to remind ourselves. Okay, so if x equals to 4, sorry, negative 4, then I'm going to go plug it in. So g of negative 4 equals to a half times negative 4, and that's going to give me negative 2. So therefore, the coordinates for that one will be negative 4 and negative 2, and that's going to be the coordinates of d. That's this part over here. Then to find c, you need to plug in the other x answer that we got. If x equals negative 1, then g of negative 1 equals to a half times negative 1, which is negative a half. And so therefore, the coordinates of c will be negative 1 and negative a half. And those will be the coordinates of c. And then the last question, use the graph to obtain the solution for 1 over x plus 3 is bigger than x plus 2 over 2. So let me try to show you what's happening over here. We can see that they almost have the same equations as over here, as the originals, but they don't look exactly the same. But what if we do this? What if we say 1 over x plus 3 minus 1 bigger than a half x? Okay, so that's these two. Then what I do is I take the 1 over. Then just on the right hand side here, I'm going to get a common denominator of 2. That'll become 1x plus 2. Sorry, this will become 2 over 2 and this will be 1x over 2. And then I can put those two together, these two over here. And so that's going to become x plus 2 over 2. And now all of a sudden we have these two graphs or these two equations over here. So what I'm tr the point I'm trying to make is that when they say this, it's exactly the same as saying this. So they are actually asking us, where is the hyperbola bigger than the straight line? Where is the hyperbola bigger than the straight line? Because this is exactly the same as this. They've just written it in a different way. That's what I was trying to show there. So let's see, where is the hyperbola bigger than the straight line? What that means is where is the hyperbola above? Well, the hyperbola is above over here. We can see that it's on top of the straight line. See that? And then it's also above over here, up until there. Because after that point, then all of a sudden, the green graph, I mean, the, <laughs> the straight line is on top. So it's going to be those intervals over there. So it's this area here once again, and this area over here. Well, let me highlight the graph. But now what we need to know is what are the x values for those points? So we know that the x value of d is minus 4. So that means that all of these x values are going to be less than minus 4. So we can say x is um, less than minus 4. Oh, but we can also say equal to because they've also said equal to. So we can do that. Or, or the proper way to say or would be like that. And then we can go um, for this little piece over here. And so that is when x is bigger than the asymptote, which is negative 3, but then up to the value of c, which is negative 1. And then we can also say including. Oh, by the way, for this asymptote here, uh, for the asymptote, you cannot ever touch the asymptote, so we cannot say bigger than and equal to. You must leave it like that. Now, if you prefer to use interval notation, you would say that x is an element from, sorry, negative infinity, up to negative 4, or from negative 3 in a round bracket up to negative 1 in a square bracket.